guys, Dr. Jared here, Tone and Titan, and in this video I wanted to share with you a few simple exercises that you can do right at home to correct knock knees, or knee valgus, or genu valgus, basically knees that collapse in towards the middle, and the pain that might be associated with this. A lot of times I hear about pain on the, like around the kneecap, inside, outside kneecap, or the inside part of the knee, or the outside part of the knee. If you have those symptoms, this video can hopefully help you out. Now, interestingly enough, this actually isn't a problem with your knee. Let me explain why. I've said it before, I'll say it again, your knee is a dumb joint. Your knee bends and it extends, and that's about it. If we talk about the position of your knee and where your knee bends and extends, that's actually controlled by what happens in your foot and ankle and controlled by what happens up here in your hip. If you have this genu valgus or knock knees, most likely your problem is either down in your foot and ankle or up in your hip. I actually shot a video a couple of weeks ago addressing flat feet, addressing kind of the pronation issue that we might run into. I've got it linked in the show notes. I'll also link it at the end of the video. Please watch that because that's definitely going to help you out. For the purposes of this video, I want to run you through some simple stretches and exercises to address what's happening right up here at the hip. When our knees come together, it's because my, t or my femur internally rotates, so my knee rotates to the middle and adducts, meaning it comes in here to the inside. That is what is creating this knock knee appearance. What we need to do is stretch those tight adductors and internal rotators to get out into this position, and then we're gonna strengthen the external rotators and the abductors to keep our knee out in that better, more healthy position. So that's exactly what you're gonna get with this video. First exercise is coming your way right now. Stretch number one is gonna be for those tight hip internal rotators. In order to stretch those out, we need to get into external rotation at the hip. One great way to do that would be with a figure four stretch or with a piriformis stretch. This is how it looks. You're gonna lay down on your back with both of your knees bent. I'm gonna cross one leg over the other. Now with my hands, I'm gonna grab behind this other knee and pull that knee up towards my chest just until we get a good comfortable stretch through this hip. So right now I'm pulling my right knee up into my right shoulder in order to stretch my left hip into this external rotation position. I would hold that for about 20 seconds and then come over here and repeat it on the other side, stretching out my right hip, hold that for 20 seconds and repeat it three times. Now I realize it's not always convenient to get down onto the floor and lay down and do a stretch like this, if you can do this seated, in my opinion, not as, not as effective, but better than nothing. And so, you know, sit in a chair or edge of your bed or couch, and then you're just gonna cross the one leg over the other to externally rotate again right up here in this hip. Now, if that's comfortable, you can add with your hand just a little over pressure right on the top of your knee to enhance that stretch even a little bit more, three times 20 seconds on both sides. Now, for the adductors, the groin muscles right here on the inside, there's a couple of different ways that I like this. You can do them both at the same time with a butterfly stretch. So you're gonna sit down, you're gonna bring both the soles of your feet together. Yes, I do need help with this one. I know, I understand. Uh, bring the soles of your feet together. Now with my elbows, I can apply a little pressure right here to the inside part of my leg, trying to push my knees down closer towards the floor until I get a good stretch through these groin muscles, through these adductor muscles. I'd hold that for 20 seconds and I'd repeat it three times. Sometimes I've found that patients, it's kind of hard to get into that position with both legs. If you want to do just one at a time, you can sit with one leg extended, pull this knee up into this position, and then the same principles apply. I'm going to push down, I'm going to give a little more pressure to that outside until I get a good stretch here in this left leg. Pull up three times, 20 seconds, and then repeat that on both sides. Those are the stretches that I like for a strengthening exercise coming your way now. Now with these strengthening exercises, these are going to be some simple exercises that will externally rotate and abduct your hip that are gonna pull your knee out of this collapsed position. That's our goal. The way that we start is with some clamshells. You're gonna lay down here on your side with both of your knees bent. Feet are together, knees are together. Knees are at about a 90 degree angle. Really simple, what we're gonna do is activate the muscles here in the back of our hip to pull our knees apart up into that position and then right back down. It's a super simple movement, but if you've never done it before, getting through about 10 to 20 of these, you'll really start to feel that here in the back of your hip. 
what I recommend is that you start with three sets of about 10 to 20 reps on both sides. If you need some more resistance, you can use a resistance band. Um, these are pretty cheap. I'll link to these down in the description below. But what you would do is put those around your knees and then the position and everything is just the same. Now what we're doing is we're pulling against the resistance of this band up into this position. Still three sets of about 10 to 20 reps is a good number to shoot for. Make sure you do that on both sides to keep everything even. Um, the next exercise is going to be for the hip abductors. So laying down on your side one more time. But now my bottom leg is bent, but my left leg is out straight. What I'm gonna do is activate these muscles here on the side of my hip to pull my heel up towards the ceiling. I don't want you to pull your toe up towards the ceiling. That uses a lot of hip flexor. We wanna keep it right back here in the backside, posterior to kind of the big bone here on the side of your hip. That's where I want you to fill it. That is what hip abduction looks like. So that would be exercise number two, about 10 to 20 reps on the right, 10 to 20 reps on the left, and then we're gonna repeat that three times. If you're looking for something even a little more aggressive to strengthen and train those outside muscles or those hip abductor muscles, I like the side plank to do that. What we're going to do is get up here, kind of a small table, do these down on the floor where you have more room. Um, I'm gonna prop up, uh, to work the left side, I'm gonna pop up onto the outside of my left foot and on the outside of my left elbow in this position right here. That really works these oblique muscles here on the side, great core strengthener, but it's also gonna work these muscles on the bottom side of the plank right here. Now, about a 20 to 30 second hold is what I typically recommend. If that's too easy, what we can do is make this static hold more dynamic by adding a hip dip to it. So you're gonna let your hip collapse down towards the floor, not all the way to the floor, but just right above it. And then use the muscles in your obliques, in your hips, to pull your hips up towards the ceiling as high as you can, and then right back down. And so that's kind of what that, I call this a side plank with a hip dip. Again, a little more aggressive, makes strengthening a little more effective. You're definitely gonna feel that one. So set of 10 on the left, set of 10 on the right, and then repeat that three times. Our last two exercises are gonna be in standing in a weight-bearing position, get up off of the floor. We're gonna make these a little more functional. We're gonna do some squats and some heel touches. Now, the problem with your squats that you might be experiencing, especially if your knees collapse to the inside, is you come down into the squat, and this is kind of what the bottom position looks like. What we need to do is train your body to keep a better position through that squat. The way that I love to do that is we're gonna get this resistance band again, and I'm actually gonna put that around my knees, just right above my knees, right in there. Once again, if you don't have a resistance band or if you don't have them at the gym, links down in the description below in this video. So now you'll see that in this position, as I come down into the squat, I'm going to engage these muscles here on the side of my hip to pull my knees out, and I just want them to push into that band the whole time. I'm focusing on keeping my knees over the toes with my knee pressure out into that band as I drop down into the squat and then return back up. Squat's a great exercise for your glutes and for your quads, but as soon as we put this band on, this band wants to bring my knees together, kicks on those abductors and external rotators to keep in a good position as soon as I put this band around there. Three sets of about 10 to 20 air squats is what I'll typically start with. And then um, if you want to progress that one, you can get under like a barbell, a back squat, or a goblet squat, things like that with that band on there are some really good ideas. Our last exercise is gonna be some heel touches. Um, at home, what I recommend is you just do this on the edge of the stair or a curb. Um, stairs are usually a little easier because you've got a railing to hold on so you can support yourself a little bit better. Now, when we're up here, really simple, what we're gonna do is stand on the edge of the stair, drop down until our heel just touches, and then return to the starting position. If you've got hip weakness, if you've got the knee valgus, if you've got the knock knee going on, your knee is going to want to travel into this position right here. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. I want you to focus on that and consciously try to avoid that. Activate these muscles here on the outside of your hip such that as you lower yourself down, your knee stays right over your toe until that heel, until my left heel just touches the ground. And then I'm gonna pull myself back up to return to that starting position right here. With your trunk, I don't want you to lean way over here. You should be relatively upright. As you lower yourself down, just touch your heel and then come back up. Once again, with that knee traveling in a good position. 
Three sets of about 10 to 20 reps on each side is what I recommend. Now, once again, I mentioned in the beginning of this, training your hip and treating the issues up here are half the battle. If you don't address the foot and ankle, you might not get the maximum benefit that you could be getting. If you're interested in that flat feet video, in that pronation video, I've got a link right here. Click on this. That will really help you out as a supplement to this video. Here's one more that YouTube thinks that you might like. You might check that one out from Tone and Titan. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the circle here to do it. And we'll see you again next time on Tone and Titan.